Hello, I am Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 9, The Saddle Row Review. I thought this episode was okay. I had very few cringeworthy moments. I laughed a little bit. Some nice references there. Planes, trains, and automobiles. And Pulp Fiction, all in the diner. <laughs> We got to see DJ Pwn3, as they're calling her in this series now, in the episode. I still prefer Vinyl Scratch, but I can understand why they might not want to use that legally. Some weird legal things get into play when you use anything created by fans, so. <laughs> Though even technically, I think DJ Pwn3 was created by the fans first, and then Hasbro used that as well in their marketing. I'm not quite sure I'd have to see who came up with who first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but there's no reason that both names can't technically be correct. Vinyl Scratch could be her given name, and DJ Pwn3 could be her stage name. Mm -hmm. Or Pinkie Pie having to stop a party for once. <laughs> Was there any music at all? Did you just give her a blank vinyl record and go, play this? <laughs> Didn't you hear the very slow, non dancey music that Pinkie Pie was pretending to rock out to? While the other club goers were just going, what the hey? No, I didn't hear any music whatsoever when it was put on, so... Mm -hmm. Maybe it was so slow and mundane, I just picked it up as what would be normal background music <laughs> and filtered it out. Well, that's kind of what it was, and... That or my sound system didn't have that channel properly playing, so I didn't hear it, so... I was just going to say that the pink pony with the whole glow stick go thing going reminded me both of Pinkie Pie and one of the, oh, I can't remember her name. In the Ruby Vital Festival, it was her and the guy with the, um... Oh, yeah, the Faunus. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of funny when I first watched the episode, I did not realize he was a Faunus, because I didn't see the tail at all. <laughs> with all that skating, you didn't see. Nope, I didn't even pick up that she had a tail until someone went, yeah, she's a Faunus. I'm like, she's a what now? <laughs> and they went, yeah, she's a Faunus. Look, god dang it, she has a tail. <laughs> I was just so focused on her face and how animated she was and what she was talking about that I didn't even pick up on that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that someone in our comments even said she was a wishy-washy kitty cat. Mm -hmm. That's probably where the point out was. And yeah, now that you mention that, she does remind me a lot of that character from Ruby, and I like the glow sticks that she has a zucchini mark. So apparently she raves a lot, and that's her talent. <laughs> yes. Okay, so back to the episode. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Getting back on track here, because apparently you're let, you want me to go more before you start going into your points. <laughs> well, I'm trying to give you an opportunity. I'm not going to be tearing this episode apart. Uh, my main complaint is out of characterness, Rarity would not have been that poorly prepared, and with that little time, let's just bust out the alicorn magic and fix the place, instead of going around sweep, sweep, sweep. Really? You're doing a dance mix to sweeping? That is wasting time, Twilight. Yeah, if it was crunch time, you use every tool at your disposal, including, hey, magic! I have magic for this! Pinkie Pie has a freaking party cannon, so <laughs> who says you can't put other decorations in there? So we magic everything clean and repaired, Pinkie Pie fires the can and we have everything decorated, then all that's left is organizing and hiring staff. As I said before, I don't really have much to say in this episode because I thought it was okay. I laughed a little bit. The references, the fact that poor Rarity was trapped in her display the entire time. <laughs> and I'm still not quite sure about what the message was. Like, what's the lesson we're supposed to learn here? I'm not quite sure. Be yourself when your friends ask for help, maybe? I'm not quite sure. I'm confused. There didn't really seem to be a standout lesson here. Except maybe be honest with your friends? Because there was no reason to lock Rarity up. You didn't want her to see that you were not doing that great. Hmm, this sounds a lot like the episode where five of the main six decorated Twilight's castle. Hmm, completely forgot about that episode. <laughs> So, yeah, we've kind of already done the whole, okay, I trust you guys to help me out, and I'm going to be over here doing something else, and uh-oh, we screwed up, we can't let them know, do something to keep them from finding out. You know what's really weird? I know MLP doesn't really have any kind of overarching story, and they do a lot of slice of life stuff, but it's like this entire episode felt like filler to me. Like, you could have just done without this story. 
is the best way I could describe it. It's like, eh. <laughs> like, why, why did you write this story? It's okay and everything, but it's not really doing anything. And we could have done better or different stuff without it. <laughs> Because you're going over something we've gone over before. You've done other stuff. We've done this kind of thing before. It's basically, we've done this before. Why is this here? I think is what I finally boiled down to my feelings about this episode. I was like, why? <laughs> it was enjoyable, yes, but why? <laughs> yeah, because it is repetitive. We've already done Rarity opening a secondary location and having issues with it. And we've done the whole, I rely on my friends because you know me and I trust you, and they freak out over it. So we've done both of those plot points before. We're not saying that it's a bad episode or anything, it's just it doesn't feel like it needs to be there. At least that's my opinion boiled down to a point. <laughs> no, it's a bit repetitive, and really you guys were afraid of what you would see in the review after you went through all the trouble of hiding the issues from her? Then why did you even talk to a reporter? Mm -hmm. And that's another thing, the, the beginning of the episodes, you know, that small section at the beginning before the credits is what they call the hook. It's supposed to be there to catch the watcher and get them hooked into the episode. It did none of that. <laughs> it set up a conflict, yes. It set up this, yes, but it just kind of fell flat. I just kind of watched the rest of the episode because I was watching the rest of the episode. <laughs> uh, once again, I'm sorry to our listeners why I'm sounding so negative, it's just... It was a good episode that could have been better if it was about something else and didn't feel like, which is weird to say, I said it before, filler for MLP. <laughs> it's like you did this just to have an episode, is the best way I could put it. <laughs> I feel that we needed to cover the opening of Rarity's next location. I also feel that it could have been done better. As I said earlier, this feels very out of character because they've already learned these lessons of trust your friends. Also, why are we allowing the landlord to shake Rarity down? That is wrong. I have a feeling they put that in there just to have some conflict and to have another problem crop up. Also, spoon garments has been done before. So is forks, duct tape, knives. Actually, there, there's been a lot of fashion that used dinnerware and stuff like that as outfits. <laughs> I brought duct tape because that's another weird thing. You're like, you made that into an outfit? <laughs> yes, also chopsticks, also starburst wrappers, toilet paper, underwear. Name it, high fashion has done it. <laughs> and so is low fashion, too. I'm pretty sure we've had outfits made out of glass before as well. <laughs> like, even though that's not very flexible, there have been outfits made with it. I just worry about the people who are walking around in it and go, whoops! Oh, my kneecaps. Properly tempered glass is actually surprisingly durable so if it was treated and handled correctly it would actually last quite easily unless you hit it on the edge who says the dress design has an edge could all be rounded curves <laughs> also rarity was only hiring one assistant who gave rainbow dash authorization to go over budget and hire three yeah i was gonna say rarity probably had a set budget for how many assistants she could hire I think overall, Rarity went way over a budget for this remodel. <laughs> well, she had unpaid labor in the form of her friends, so she's only having to pay rent, uh, materials for her dresses, which she probably would have made anyways for her other boutiques. So she has rent and the cost of the associates. Hmm. And probably catering, and I don't know if uh, Pinkie Pie managed to get a deal to have DJ uh, Poetry perform for free. <laughs> Well, what Vinyl was doing was upstairs in their party hall, so it was more of just convincing her to, hey, um, I'm sorry about before, would you be willing to try this instead? And I don't really know that budget matters a whole lot for a unicorn whose one of their special abilities is finding gemstones. Yeah, but with the way she uses them, they cannot be worth a lot in Pony Society. Oh, uh, I think the only one who got full jewel-encrusted gowns was Sapphire Shore. Mm. But, you know, she does use them for payments, so... Mm. So what'd you think about the daughter? She was just kind of thrown in there to be an obstacle. You know, she just wanted to do things that were new and different and 
to her vision and never mind that you know this entire shop was somebody else's vision she wanted what she wanted so it was a lot like watching Pearl from Spongebob when she takes over the Krusty Krab only not as much of a disaster <laughs> though she was kind of cute at the end there I think it was after the credits I can't remember if it was after the credits or not, but I know it was like this scene that you didn't expect and she kind of pops up and goes, ah, and she's kind of cute there. <laughs> oh, and that reminded me of another spot that I thought was kind of cute and I laughed at really, um, I laughed at pretty well, was Pinkie Pie uh, after she's eaten everything and she looks, she goes, ah, and then she just slides the um, bill over to the reporter. <laughs> yeah, she just slides the bill over to the reporter. She goes, ha, ha, ha. And there were a lot of nice facial expressions in this episode. That's always nice when you get these nice new expressions and you can tell the team is really playing around with their tool set to make things look nice and interesting. The animation in this episode was really nice. I'm trying to go over nice things now because I spent a good chunk at the beginning of the episode going, why? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the facial expressions are nice. The parts that were funny were funny. And a nice little special effects there with Twilight going jumping across the room in slow motion to close the door. <laughs> Also, I don't think we ever got to see Rarity's display. I can't remember. I need to watch the episode again to see if we actually got to see what she finally, you know, she had all day, <laughs> what she came up with. Well, we do pretty much get to see it because we see the display case when she goes to slam through the door and they've taken the chair away and she just stumbles out. Hmm. Overall, it had its nice points. It was well written. It's just... It didn't feel like it was needed. I enjoyed the parts that I did enjoy. Overall, I'd say this is, if we're going to grade an episode, it would be a 5 out of 10. Because it's right in the middle. It's a good episode, but it has enough points to make it so it's like, okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't hate it. I'm not tearing it apart, as our listeners can tell if they stayed this long. <laughs> it mainly felt out of character and repetitive because these were items that we've touched on before. The things that were unique and the animation and the jokes, all nice. It just didn't really feel necessary. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 9, The Saddle Row Review. Thanks for listening. If you want to be notified of new episodes, please subscribe. If you enjoy Lex's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you would like to support Lex's creative talent, you can check out his Patreon or check the link below for commission availability.